Welcome to this Tobacco University video where I'm going to go over photosynthesis related to cannabis production. All right, let's look at some of the plant physiology and related to cannabis production. So first off, we have to understand the basic equation. And this is the basic photosynthetic equation. Any reactant, and reactants here are on the left, uh, can be a limiting reactant as far as generating sugars and oxygen. So carbon dioxide is easily a limiting factor, especially during high light intensities. So as growers to maximize plant production, typically sugars, in the end, we want to make sure the carbon dioxide, the water, and the light are not going to be limiting as far as the plant is concerned. So we'll start with the light component. Well, that light spectrum. And remember, we're looking here at the visible light spectrum. So if you look here, we can see all these different wavelengths of light correspond with different colors. Overall, the reds are the longer wavelengths compared to the violets and the blues here. And these are all measured in nanometers. And for plants, we're seeing some increased importance with also the ultraviolet spectrum, as well as the infrared, which are areas outside of the visible spectrum. So looking at a comparison spectrum, this is a representative solar spectrum looking at basically the sun. This is the kind of, we're looking here is the output of the sun and what it produces as far as different wavelengths go, and wavelengths are measured in nanometers. So this is sampled from 350 to 850 to, just to give an idea of the representative solar spectrum. So when we're looking at plants, well, chlorophyll is important. Uh, chlorophyll in any form uh, relates to the green pigments found in the mesosomes of cyanobacteria and in the chloroplasts of algae in plants. Chlorophyll is essential in photosynthesis, allowing plants to absorb energy from light, taking that light energy and ultimately going to go and convert it to chemical energy such as sugars. Chlorophyll absorbs light most strongly in the blue portion of the electromagnetic spectrum as well as the red portion, but don't take that to mean that it's only absorbing those. Even though we see the green color, that means it's reflecting green, there is some green light that is still absorbed within plants. Conversely, it is a poor absorber of green or near green portions of the spectrum, which it reflects, producing the green color of chlorophyll containing tissues, but it still is absorbing some of that green light. Two types of chlorophyll exist in photosynthesis plants. Uh, they are chlorophyll A as well as chlorophyll B. Now looking here, plants absorbing more than just chlorophyll. So we, while chlorophyll does get a lot of attention, we also have to take into consideration more than just chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, there's also different compounds that are absorbing different wavelengths. This is allowing the plant through basically what's called an antenna complex to utilize more of the wavelengths of light that it's exposed to. So this is helpful to the plant because it's not just needing these finite little wavelengths, it's being able to utilize a greater portion of the light it's exposed to. So here's that kind of utilization of di different wavelengths of light, and I get my sources right here. Kind of gives you a nice little visual comparison here. Where we're seeing that green light, yes, it is absorbing less, but less does not mean, in this case, zero. So as a result, this you can see that definitely in that bluer purple range, and whereas that orange and red range, we're seeing a greater percentage of relative response, but all wavelengths are being utilized in some way with plants. So here's a research article looking at kind of the photosynthetic response here with variations with the photosynthetic photon flux densities, abbreviated PPFD. So that's going to be important here. And this is a great article if you want to research it further. So when we're looking at cannabis, because this is focused uh, initially on cannabis here, is that cannabis is a high um, light intensity plant. Sunlight has a light intensity of measured in that photosynthetic photon flux density of 2,000 micromoles per meter squared per second. However, it is not economical to provide uh, this light level for an indoor operation. Canvas is often given around 1,000 micromoles per second to aid in plant quality. In comparison, a low light intensity plant such as lettuce can grow well in only 200 micromoles per second squared. And we can see that evident right here where it almost grows, produces a little bit larger leaves uh, compared to the higher light intensities. So this is why it's important to try to find research on the particular crop that is of interest of you. 
So that PPFD and temperature, how do these kind of correlate or how do they kind of relate? It's important to take all environmental conditions into consideration. So keep in mind that for the abbreviation uh, CI's internal CO2 concentration, CA's external concentration, looking particularly at uh, cannabis leaves here. So what the researchers found is that a combination of 30 degrees uh, Celsius in temperature and 1,500 micromoles uh, measured with a PPFD may be best suitable for indoor cultivation of cannabis plants, in this case the cannabis sativa that they were looking at. So this kind of gives you an idea of the light intensity, but also the temperature to maybe set as your targets if you're looking at maximizing yield of cannabis. So when we're looking at light, we also need to consider the light quantity and also the light quality. So light quantity, or DLI, is, uh, which correlates more with biomass, and DLI is the daily um, light intensity that it's getting. So more light equals more plant, at least following the biological curve or plateau. So it's not a linear ex kind of or an exponential curve. It's just kind of this plateauing region here. Light quality or color, which is a PAR reading, impacts the morphology of the plant. So if you give your plant more of the red wavelengths, it has a tendency to stretch more. If it tends to more of just the blue wavelengths, it tends to stay more compact, closer internode. We can also see here that with light intensity, uh, photosynthetic rate, some areas can be light limited, some can be carbon dioxide limited, and this all goes back to that photosynthetic equation. And we could hopefully see now how those different components from an equation you may have learned previously now relates to cannabis production.